Hi there, this is Unmesh from Perfect, and in these crazy times, I hope you're staying healthy, not only physically, but also mentally. It's super essential. Thank you so very much for tuning into this video. About nine months ago, we did a video about an AI platform which colored black and white photos and it did a pretty good job of it. However, it had its own quirks and hits and misses. Recently, I came across another AI platform which tends to do the same thing. Only this time, my jaw dropped so hard that I thought I had to get surgery to get it back. It's so good, my friends, that I couldn't resist sharing it with you. And don't worry, you can use it for free. Well, kind of free. We'll get to that later. In this video, we're gonna test it with some black and white images, some old images, and also some images where the color is damaged. Along the way, we'll also compare it with Photoshop's inbuilt coloring AI as well. And also, I'm gonna share with you a couple tips and tricks inside of Photoshop where you can just boost the quality of the colored image by leaps and bounds with just two or three steps. I'm super excited to share this with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Explorer this time or Finder, whatever you want to call it, depending upon your operating system, we have some black and white photos. And the platform that we are talking about right here is myheritage.com. So. All you got to do is to go into that website and then as you can see, I have a free account here. It says go premium <laughs> free account. All right. Now in the photos tab, once you sign in or create a free account, click on colorize photos. So here, let's just drag and drop this black and white photo as you can see right here. Pretty simple black and white photo. Let's drag this and drop it into the platform. Later, I'm going to show something with you regarding this photo that's also going to blow your mind. As you can see, it has colorized it pretty quick. Let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before. Now keep in mind, this was black and white. This is the after. Just look at the color. The hair was very complicated here. Even then, it managed to color it somehow. There's a little bit of leak that we all can ignore, but look at the color. It is so darn good. It might not be at the highest resolution. We'll see. So in Photoshop, let's open up both the black and white photo and the colored photo. Let's drag it and drop it inside of Photoshop. If you look at it right now, it looks all right. However, once you zoom in, look at the eyes of the black and white photo. It has a lot of detail to it, but look at the eyes of the colored photo. It might not have as much details. Look at it, right? Now we're going to place it on top of one another. So let's just drag it and drop it right there. First of all, let's check the resolution. This is 56163744. And the colored is also, no, it's different. It's a little smaller, 5477, right? Now let's drag it and drop it inside of Photoshop over the canvas and make sure it fits properly. So we're going to set the width to 5616, 5616 pixels. Don't forget, otherwise it would take it as a percentage. And there you go. It's on top of one another. So this is the black and white version. This is the color version. Now, what if we want more detail? Have a look. The black and white has more details. The colored one has a little lesser detail. So first of all, let's make sure both of them are aligned. So we're going to change the blend mode to difference first of all. And I feel that we need to move it a little bit to the right. So press control or command T move it a little bit to the right. Right now, there are no lines or edges, which means that it is aligned. Now, simply change the blend mode from normal to color. That way, it'll make it even more natural. Take a look at this. So this is by itself how the coloring was. If you change the blend mode to color, you preserve all the details also at the same time. Just look at the skin. It looks even more better. So in some cases, it works to even bump up the quality. Now, can I share with you an interesting thing? This image was not originally a black and white photo. It was a color photo that I converted it to black and white and then colored it again using this platform. Can I share with you the colored photo? You'll be surprised. Even the original colors are not as good as the colored one. Now, I know there are some reds in the shadows too much. We can always repair that, but take a look at it. Let's place it side by side. So I'm going to close it and let's go to arrange and two up vertical. Now we have it side by side. Take a look at this. So this is the original photo on the right. And this is the one that we colored with a software. Even if you feel it's not as good as the original, we can safely say it did a pretty good job coloring a black and white photo. Let's start with the second example. All right. So we have a black and white version of this young lady right over there. So let's go to the black and white folder. And let's just drag this one and drop it inside of my heritage right over there. 
in the same place. You don't have to go to another tab to do it. And by the way, this is not a paid review. I'm not paid to say this. This is not sponsored at all. Even I am on a free plan. So here is the before, here is the after. Amazing. Now, there are some discrepancies here. I'm going to share with you how you can fix that in Photoshop. Similarly, in Photoshop, first of all, let's open up the black and white photo. Let's drag it and drop it into Photoshop. And let's consolidate it by going to Window, Arrange, Consolidate, All to Tabs. Now, on top of that, we're going to drag and drop the color photo just like so. Now, this fits perfectly. Now, do keep in mind, every colored photo does come with a watermark. If you want to remove it, you got to pay. Now, I know some of you are having some ideas that you are Photoshop experts and you can do anything you want, but hold your horses. <laughs> These people are smarter. They have limited the amount of images that you can convert to color or that you can colorize to 10 in a free plan. Now, I still know that some of you smart people are having some brilliant ideas and I'm not going to go there. But if you can and you do use it, please support the people who work their brass off to make this excellent piece of technology. Back to the image and we're going to use the same technique here. We just want the color from it. So change the blend mode from normal to color. It looks pretty good. But then again, there are some discrepancies. To fix that, create a brand new layer. Take the brush. Take a regular soft round brush. Set the flow to about 10% and change the blend mode to color. Now we're going to sample a color that's appropriate and just paint over this excessive red area. You can also use it to fix some other areas as well. Just sample the color that you like and paint over additional areas. So here's the before, here's the after. That red part is gone, but I guess it's too much. So I'm just going to increase the opacity slowly and gradually and keep it at about 45%. So there you go. That area is fixed. Now you might wonder, what about the eyes? Well, let's fix that too. Let's create a brand new layer again and take a sample from an area that looks good and paint on the other areas. So for this one as well, I'm going to take a sample and just paint. Maybe you can decrease the flow even more. Let's go with 4%. Just paint with that. Don't forget to change the blend mode to color. All right, that area we fixed. Take a look. Here's the before. Some weird color over the eyes. If I turn it on, all of that is gone. Also inside the eye whites. Let's paint that area properly. Here as well, paint that properly. That is fixed too. So here's the before of the eye. Here's the after. All of that is fixed. Now let's do the eye on the left. So you can just take your time to do it yourself. You get the point. You understand the technique. Sample a color that you like and paint over these areas as well. Sample a color, an appropriate color, the right color. And you can use that to remove these excessive pink spots right here. Now since this channel is all about Photoshop, how can we not talk about it? So recently, Adobe introduced this colorization feature inside of Neural Filters as a beta filter. Although it has some manual controls, we'll see how the automatic controls or the automatic default values compare with that of this platform. So again, let's open up this black and white photo inside of Photoshop. And this time, we're going to go to Neural Filters. First of all, let's make a copy of the background layer. Let's go to Filter, Neural Filters. Inside of that, in the beta filters section, it's still loading, guys. So in the beta filters, let's scroll down and see if we have the colorize option. All right, now I have to download this. Let's download it. And as soon as it downloads, it colors the black and white photo. Well, how... What do you think the results are? Well, that's for you to decide. Well, it has some options where you can color different things. So let's say you clicked a point here, created a point, and you wanted to color it red, you can do that. And then you wanted to color the skin something else. So I added one more point here. And maybe I wanted this color to be a little bit lighter. So you can do that. So there are options too. Anyway, so delete all the points. Look at the default values. This is the result. Hit OK. Now let's compare it with the color one. So I'm just going to drag and drop the color one right here from my heritage and just put it side by side. So let's go to window, arrange, to up, vertical. The answer is clear. Adobe, got to do something about your software. Let's not talk about colors for a second. Let's also talk about detection. Now, Adobe's select subject is one of the best advancements in Photoshop that I've seen in my 
10 to 15 years of Photoshop. Now it does a pretty good selection of the subject. Still, when it comes to color, it kind of missed out on selecting the background properly. With my heritage platform, each and every leaf right here is colored green. But with Photoshop, it just colors the left hand side and it also colors the walls. And on the right hand side, it's still kind of grayscale. Now, as you can see, the comparison results are pretty clear. But then again, to Adobe's fairness, Photoshop does a million more things than my heritage website, right? So it would be unfair to com compare just one feature inside of Photoshop. And even that is a beta feature to a platform that is made for those features. Right. So then again, it just is um, a statement that Adobe's AI still needs a lot of improvement. And they're saying that it's just still inside the beta section of Photoshop. Now let's try some old photos. Look at this pretty nice animation. It says it's coloring it. Well, interesting. There's also an enhanced feature right here. Uh, well, you can try it yourself, but I got to tell you just it over sharpens something and it just removes some of the details. I'm not a fan of that, but this coloring is brilliant. Now, let me share with you some tips and techniques inside of Photoshop of how you can improve this and make it usable. So let's open up Photoshop and inside of that, let's drag and drop in this old photo, the black and white version. On top of that, we'll drop the color version and change the blend mode to color. It might not always give you a flawless result, but the quality is maintained. So let's take a look. So this is the before. This is the after. As you can see, in this case, the quality is the same. So even if you change it to color, and then move forward. It won't make much of a difference. It just makes sure that you have the original luminosity values and you can go from there. So this is normal and this is color. See what is good for you. Normal is good for me in this example. But again, there's a lot of brightness on the face and it just is clipping too much. There is no color in it. So how do we bring just a little bit of color there and make the skin tones a little better? So first of all, create a solid color adjustment layer for the skin tones. Let's choose this color. Choose the brightest color here and hit OK. Change the blend mode to multiply. You can do this all over or you can mask it to just apply it to the skin. It's up to you and change the blend mode to multiply and have a look. You have some colors to work with. If you don't want it on the eyes or you only want it on the skin, you can select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush with white as the foreground color, just paint over the skin. I know it looks like too much. Don't you worry about it. I'm gonna paint a little extra, dab a little extra so that it just flows through a little more and take it away from his shirt. Also take it away from the eyes as well. We don't want it over here. Now, it is definitely too much. So let's decrease the opacity to about 30%. You want a little more? Let's go with 35%. Now for the eyes as well, you can create another solid color adjustment layer and just give it a little desaturated blue eyes and change the blend mode again to color. And we only want it on the eyes. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush and paint with white over the eyes. The advantage of adding a solid color adjustment layer is that you can change the colors later. So I'm just gonna decrease the saturation. And you can also change the hue. This looks better, hit okay. And there you have it, pretty nice color, isn't it? Now this platform also has a feature which repairs colors. Now if we go to colorize photos, you will see there's an option right here if we bring it down. There's an option for restoring colors. So this is the before, and this is the after. It did a pretty good job. But can we also do this in Photoshop? I feel we can. So I have a photo with the colors changed a little bit. Have a look at this photo. The colors are a little changed and we're going to just upload it. This is not a bad color. Maybe it's a color grade. We're just going to drag it and drop it right here anyway. Let's see what this does and let's see if we can compare it with Photoshop. And that's where Photoshop shines. The amount of things that we can do manually is just it's just limitless. It's just, I know it's going to be wow. Here's the before and here is the after. Oh my gosh, it's just so great, right? Let's stack them up in Photoshop and let's compare. Let's see if we can actually do it with Photoshop. So let's open up the repair color image. On top of that, we're going to open the color restored as a layer. Let's drop it over that in the canvas. Now, as you can see, it's a little smaller. Now, the document dimension is 4000 pixels. So press Ctrl or Command T and set the width to 4000 
pixels. It just decreased the resolution a little bit. So you have to be watchful of that. Now, here is the before. Here is the after. And it did a pretty good job. Now, one tip that you can apply here is just simply decrease the opacity for a more natural result. So I'm going to stop just right there at about 68 to 70%, and it gives us a pretty good result. But also at the same time, can we do this with Photoshop and just by using Photoshop? Well, let's try this. Let's turn it off and just above the original image layer, create a curves adjustment layer. Now, zoom in, choose the gray eyedropper, the midtone one, and click on an area which should have been white. So let's click on this area. This looks to be about right. Or let's go with this area. All right, take a look at this. So this is what we did with Photoshop with just one step. And this is with my heritage. I think my heritage really pulled this off on this one. Maybe we can add one more curves and make it even better. But for those of us who are new to Photoshop and might not have that much expertise, it's a kind of interesting website. So there you go. It was not that hard. We kind of fixed it. And if you've been watching Pix Imperfect, you can clearly easily do it in no time because all we talk about is curves. The one in Photoshop, of course. So this is the one that we did. And this is with my heritage. It's a little more brighter and we can easily achieve that result by just increasing the curves a little more right here. And there you go. Even better. Because if you look at the my heritage result, it just blurred the eyelashes and it, it's not that of a high quality. But look at our result. Much higher quality. The colors are fixed. Pretty good. So in this aspect, I can say that even if you have basic knowledge of Photoshop, you can do better in restoring photos when compared to my heritage in most cases. But either way, we can say that this is one heck of a platform. Recently, also, this platform got viral because if you uploaded a photo, it also animated the face. So a lot of people were uploading their grandparents' photos, their great, great, great grandparents' photos if they had it, and they actually animated the face from that old photo. It's pretty cool. You can try it. It's inside of, let me share that with you. If you go to photos, you have this feature called animate photos. It's really getting wild. It does some weird stuff sometimes, but it's worth a try. I hope this video helped you. I hope I could share with you something new. And it's very important for you to understand how to use Photoshop to maximize the results. And also, in many cases, if nothing works, Photoshop can. And in also many cases, you can do a better job than an AI software. Thank you so very much for watching. This video was made possible by these amazing, nice people who support Piximperfect on Patreon and help keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. If you wish to support Piximperfect, go to patreon.com slash Piximperfect. There are also some rewards and perks like the ability to download the finished PSD files and Q&A sessions just with Patreons, exclusive live sessions, and so on and so forth. Either way, thank you so very much for watching. I truly appreciate your time. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.